molecular orbital theory. So molecular orbital theory is a way of understanding the formation of chemical bonds of, in molecules and a way of understanding other chemical and physical properties. So to try to explain it, what we have here on the left, so recall a 1s orbital from earlier in the semester, earlier in your chemistry experience, is a sphere. Now, I'm not the best drawer in the world, but a sphere. Where this patch is the nucleus, and this represents the distribution of the electron density in a 1s orbital, but a spherical shape. And the simplest molecule is hydrogen gas, H2. So the tenets for MO theory, the first one, is that you have atomic orbitals combining to become molecular orbitals. So molecular orbitals, MO. And however many atomic orbitals you have, that's how many molecular orbitals you will have. For this example, you have two atomic orbitals. They will combine to make two molecular orbitals. So two in, two out. So here at H2, you have an atomic orbital from one of the hydrogen atoms and a 1s orbital from the other one. So they can combine constructively or destructively so the constructive way Whoa, 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 what just happened? <laughs> there we go. The um, constructive way I know this is very technical. is their, their electron density is shared. Okay, it, it just over everything overlaps. The other way is the destructive way. Just drew them out. So the destructive way is one thing to point out. This region is called a node. What that is, is that it's a place where there is no electron density. And the reason that the constructive combination of the orbitals is lower in energy okay, well, this is an energy scale low energy high energy so there are no nodes okay. when they combine the electrons can be anywhere in this region the other combination okay, the electrons can be here or here but not in this region there's higher energy because the electrons have less, for lack of a better word, volume to occupy. And this is odd in term terminology. A constructive 
interference orbital, molecular orbital, is a sigma orbital. So one is sigma. It's called a bonding orbital. The higher energy one, one is sigma star, or an anti-bonding orbital. Anti-bonding does not mean that electrons can't go into it, that it's against bonding. It's not what it means. What it just means is anti-bonding is higher energy than a bonding orbital. Two atomic orbitals, two molecular orbitals. They can overlap constructively where there are no nodes, or they can overlap destructively where there is a node, a region where the electrons cannot be, and that's higher energy. Long explanation, but to try to relate it to something you may have had experience with. Constructive interference, if you think of these as individual waves, you've had experience with sound waves. This is a chord on a guitar. Whenever a chord is being played, all the strings are plucked in such a way where they interfere constructively and you get a pleasant sound. If you've play, heard bad guitar playing, you hear that buzzing or that type of sound, what's happening there when you hear a buzz whenever guitars are played poorly, the sound waves are destructively interfering. You get a dead sound. That, by analogy, it's not perfect, but that dead sound is sort of like a node. The sound cancels each other out and there's nothing there. In a similar way, the atomic orbitals, when they combine, can interact destructively and result with dead zones. It's a complicated topic, but that's an introduction with hydrogen, with the molecular hydrogen. Molecular orbital diagrams. Okay. So what do each of these mean? So if you, earlier in the play posit, there were, the idea is that if you have two atomic orbitals, they will combine to make two molecular orbitals. Okay. So region-wise, Everything under this heading, atomic orbitals, atomic orbitals. So if you had B2, C2, and N2 molecules form, so diatomics, homonuclear diatomics, that this side would represent one of the atoms, this side would represent the other. And then their atomic orbitals, the middle, represents what happens to them when they become molecular orbitals. So if we look at these three, so their electron configurations, if we look at carbon, carbon's electron configuration, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So that's its ground state electron configuration that you learned earlier in the semester. And each carbon has the same configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So the s orbitals would combine like on the earlier in the play posit for hydrogen. Okay, they would combine in a similar way. If you look at carbon has a each carbon has a 2s orbital, atomic orbital. Okay. So the 2s's 
combine to form two molecular orbitals, a bonding orbital and an anti-bonding orbital. Low energy, higher energy, two in, two out. The p orbitals. Remember that you have a px, py, pz. So px, py, pz. Okay, review your quantum numbers. But the main idea, one, two, three, four, five, six atomic orbitals. One, two, three, four, five, six molecular orbitals. Six atomic orbitals produce six molecular orbitals. Bonding, bonding, antibonding, antibonding. Three bonding orbitals, lower in energy. Three antibonding orbitals, higher in energy. So how would you fill the electrons? Carbon, 2s, up, down, Hund's rule, up, down. Okay. I'm just doing the atomic orbitals first. And then up, 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 up. That's generated from the atomic orbitals, the ground, ground state electronic configurations. this would be if you had an individual carbon atom. If you formed C2, what happens? It's the same idea. So, hundred up, down, up, down, those are the four electrons, up, up, down, down. And that is C2. That would be this middle region represents how the electrons are arranged in molecular orbitals in a C2 molecule. Six electrons, six electrons, so a total of 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, shown and the four other ones are down in the 1s. Okay, so do that again. So 4, 4, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. That's an example of how you generate a molecular orbital diagram or fill up a molecular orbital diagram for a homonuclear diatomic. Now, the difference when you go oxygen, fluorine, and hypothetical neon 2, we'll look at why neon 2 does not exist a little bit later, but um, the orbitals here flip. You can learn about that um, at the discretion of your instructor, but these flip. when you transition from nitrogen to oxygen.